I want to share with you a very personal story. It's a story about how my life stopped in a handful of seconds. It is New Year's Eve 2011. I'm partying with my friends right there above Innsbruck, right above the red arrow there. We're watching the fireworks show from above the town. It's quite spectacular, beautiful. We're lighting up firecrackers, we're having a few beers, a few laughs. Then my friend comes to me and tells me the group is going down. The fireworks show is over, so we're going down partying. And I saw the bus, and it was full with drunk people, so I suggested to my friend, uh, why don't you just take a walk with me down the mountain? It's just a hill, nothing too serious. He was reluctant at first, but then he accepted, and we started walking. It sounded like a better idea than being in a full bus with drunk people. So we started walking down the mountain. The fireworks, the, the smell was still in the air. We were walking over a few snowy meadows and into a forest. In the forest, I was maybe 10 to 20 meters in front of my friend. When I was, I was confronted with a boulder, I had hopped down the boulder. It was maybe 40, 50 centimeters. Very tiny. But I wasn't thinking at the moment. I was just doing. So I jumped out the boulder and didn't notice that the hill went a little steeper there. Tried to grab a tree, but failed. This single failure of grabbing that tree changed my life completely, forever. I started rolling, and I will come to that later. I'm used to that feeling. Um, started rolling uncontrollably. I thought to myself, so this, this must take an end. I've, I've been, been in this situation before. This has to take an end. Suddenly, I wake up, lying on the path there. I tumbled down this cliff. It's in front of you. It was at least 10 meters. I wanted to stand up and just continue my walk down the mountain like nothing has happened. It didn't work. I was instantly paralyzed from my waist down. I laid there for two or three hours. I called my friend, Kitty, please help me. I can't move my legs. He came climbing down the cliff, which is a miracle by itself, especially after a few beers. Uh, he took up his phone and called the rescue team. This phone saved my life because I didn't have one on me. I laid there on the path on ice for two or three hours waiting for the rescue team to, they couldn't come by helicopter, so it took a few hours. Eventually they came by car, and I was developing hypothermia. My, my temperature was gone down to 32 degrees centigrade. After that, I remember seeing a guy, like flashing lights, and a guy coming with a, some kind of a big adrenaline shot or something, or morphine, or what, what, it, what it was, and then nothing. Three days later, I wake up in the hospital. I have no idea what has happened. I simply open my eyes, and I'm inside a very boring, colored, creamy room. <laughs> and I see my girlfriend there instantly, and then my family, who wasn't living with us there, so I knew it was serious. Then the doctor that operated my spine came in and told me the words that I will never forget. Um, you will never walk again in your life. And that's a fact, sorry. He was very straight and honest about it, but he gave me absolutely no hope whatsoever. And I've since found, to found out that false hope can be bad, but no hope is even worse. But I'm quite a <coughs> stubborn person, so I refused the news completely from the right first second. These are my injuries. The other ones are just like a paper cut compared to the first one. It happened to me, and it can happen to you. 
It even happened to Superman himself. Here's a 3D MRI of my back. Two days while I was in a coma, they took this picture. Here you can see the vertebrae shattering the T12, tearing up my spine through the side. Told me that there was complete, complete damage. There was nothing um. working below the waist. So who was I before? I was an adventurer, explorer, traveler, filmmaker and snowboarder. Well, I'm actually still a filmmaker. I just finished uh, Iceland's first full feature non-narrative film. But that's another story. The other elements, the other aspects of my life, I lost right at the, the, those seconds that I fell. who I was before, if you ask me now, it's stupidity, completely. I was an adrenaline junkie? I guess so, yes. But I just love to travel the world, learn new languages, and meeting new people constantly. It was everything that I wanted, and I was living with my girlfriend in Innsbruck before the accident, and it was paradise on earth. This is me snowboarding there. I miss him very much my old self, because I can't do these things anymore. But I'm still standing here. I should be in a wheelchair, but I couldn't. Why, why didn't I hurt myself doing these things? I ask my all the time. I, I, it was just a walk in the woods. Why don't I hurt myself there, for example? This is completely ridiculous. I did this for 12 years without breaking one single bone, and I've never broken a single bone in my body except for the T12. This is where I've been around the world. I've not seen everything yet, not even close, but I want to. Rehabilitation. I had no idea where I was, where I, what, what I was going to go through for the next years. I met wonderful people in the rehabilitation center in Reykjavik. After two weeks of stabilizing my spine in Innsbruck, I was flown with the Icelandic Coast Guard to Iceland. There, I met wonderful people, but the difficulty and the problem that I saw with the rehabilitation, that it was all focused on the wheelchair. No, no one was hoping for anything. There was just a standard procedure. This is his injury. He's going to sit in a wheelchair for the rest of his life. But it just, I can't, I cannot do it. I'm still young. And most of these accidents happen to young people between 18 and 30. So it's completely devastating. I soon found out that I, I learned, I lived through it myself, that the wheelchair was not the option. It w it's not the solution to the problem. It only adds to problems. As you can see there, you lose your bone density, muscle atrophy, major shorting of tendons in ankles, knees, and hips. It's like if you sit many years in a wheelchair, your body becomes like the wheelchair shape. So you, become, you can't stretch yourself. You, you become like a frog somehow. Obviously, I didn't want this to happen to me. And these are just a few problems related to the wheelchair. It's basically, like I said there, use it or lose it. Also, the impact on the brain, it's enormous. And I, I stood up from the wheelchair eight months after I got into the rehabilitation center. Everyone was talking to me, you have to sit down in the wheelchair, you're going to break a hip or something. But I was much more concerned with what would happen to my body if I would sit down. So I stood up from a wheelchair permanently eight months after, apparently the only one to do so in the Icelandic history of rehabilitation in spinal cord injuries. But like half a year later after that, maybe 1.5 years after my accident, I got the massive aftershock that everyone gets. And probably the second year after an injury is even harder than the first, because you realize that 
you work so hard trying everything you can to regain your function, but you realize that you're, it, it becomes permanent. The sensation, everything you gain back, there are small victories and you feel strong, then suddenly it stops and you realize that the situation is permanent. So I went to research this, how this would impact my brain on the internet that I mainly use for my rehabilitation. Found out that I had, I had neuropathic pain, which is a problem doubling the, pro the other problem by itself, but also chronic fatigue, um, melancholic depression, post-traumatic stress disorder, and other things, sadness, isolation. So I went to see a psychiatrist. She's been working in the field for 30 years, so I, I thought she could maybe help my injured brain. I told her about these problems that I had, and she, she was shocked at first, and then looked at me still, and then she asked, my, my God, I've never seen so, someone this much off the chart of any depression or mental illness that I've ever seen. I probably can't help you. Do you want another appointment? No, thank you. <coughs> I'm in this battle myself. I found it out then, and I know it now. But fortunately, I'm still stubborn. That's why I'm standing here in front of you. For the past two years, I've been developing exoskeletons with a wonderful team of experts at Usher HQ here in Reykjavik, Iceland. We have developed the world's first non-motorized exoskeleton ever made. And I think this is a crucial part in the recovery of spinal cord injury. I know that we need interventions, and I have them there. Peripheral nerve, spinal bridges, stem cell treatments. And what I think is right for me, and that I've been researching the most, is neuroprosthetic system implants. This is me walking in the standing first and then walking in the exoskeleton we made. We know it's a crucial step to recovery to, with every intervention there is, there is walking. Guaranteed, you have to walk to get better. There is no there instant cure. Inside, 10, 15 seconds. Yeah. That should be nice. Peter, shut up. <laughs> so we know that this is a crucial part of the recovery, but I need an intervention. And I'm going to sacrifice myself in human trials beginning this or next year in Switzerland where they implant a neuroprosthetic system into the person's spinal cord. This is now an experimental feature. Only four people have gotten similar treatments. Wonderful results. They start by applying chemical solutions into the spinal cord, exciting it and then implant the neuroprosthetic system you can see there on the cord, making it highly activated instead of kind of a torment. It, it's sleeping. It doesn't get the connections normally. I've, all, I've told you I already developed the exoskeleton, so obviously I'm going to use that while walking and train myself and teach my spine how to walk again properly because this is my life. And I don't want to live it sitting down. No one does. But it happens to everyone. It's been 50 years since we went to the moon. We took a great big leap there. Armstrong said it himself. I think, and I strongly believe, that now we need, and we are going to take the next big leap in human history, we are going to fix this problem once and for all. Thank you.